Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining Archangel Alts, and we are here to go through our lesson plan today. So um, I've already actually set this up and I'm going to break things down into the most basic uh, and cover each of them, each topic, each section of uh, the stuff with charts and indicators in their own video. And uh, the ones that I would recommend that you start with, I'm going to mention this in each of these, um, is to start with the Binance Basics. Okay, I'm going to show you how to um, the sign up. I'm going to show you how to uh, load up your client version, which is what we're looking at here, and how to load up the browser version of the same thing. They both have similar, all the same stuff that you can do most part, um, but slightly different layouts. So I'm not going to go over all the details on the layouts again here. I'm going to assume that you look at that video first. What we're going to look at here is the charts and specifically we're going to just try to understand what's happening in this part of the display. So I'm actually going to put it to where there's nothing but this display. Usually you'll have your coin list over here where you can swap out which markets you're trading on. You're going to have your numbers over here where you see the current values and what people are buying and selling. And you're going to have uh, uh, you're going to have your, your buy section over here, your limit orders, um, switching back and forth between buys and sells if you're in this version, and have your orders and your history for, for your orders that you've already entered. So I'm dragging all of this out of the way so we can just focus on this big, beautiful center view here. So what I have loaded here is Bitcoin to USDT, which is US dollars represented in Tether. Um, it's where the majority of Bitcoin is being traded and exchange um, on Binance Exchange is one of the largest uh, volumes. So the volume specifically of Tether, at least these days, you know, it could change within a week. Um, well, this is crypto a week is a year, so <laughs> in less time than that. Um, yes, it could change. But um, for now, even though there are a lot of people that are not huge fans of Tether, it is the most consistent and relevant um, to what Bitcoin does. Um, so down here on our chart, we have uh, our timeline, and this actually only goes back to 8.13, so August 13th, 2017. That's when uh, Bitcoin was first listed on Binance. I would imagine that that means that's pretty much the beginning of Binance. And this was when all was well with the world, almost hit 20,000 here. Um, but anyway, so we see our timeline down here. Here's 2018. And as we go along here, here's to current. So this is a, you know, a bird's eye view, um, a zoomed out view of a long period of time. Um, you could actually look at months, but that's not going to be very relevant until a few years from now. Hopefully everything will still be going as it's going at that time. Um, I, I'm going to cover all these different things, multi-interval intervals and comparisons and um, the depth uh, in separate stuff. So we're going to deal with what we're dealing with here. But all those things exist, okay? All right. So <laughs> when we're in our center and we're looking at this, what are we looking at? These are called candles. Um, they're, uh, they have a very long history. They are called doji candles, D-O-J-I, if I remember correctly. Uh, we'll go very deep into the actual um, study of the candles themselves. This is just an overview for you to understand what it is that you're looking at, okay? So going this way, in our horizontal horizontal is our timeline going this way is the price value okay so you know up is more and that's pretty much how that works so you can see this is represented in whatever the unit is so in this case how many dollars is bitcoin worth here it was almost twenty thousand dollars so three six nine twelve eighteen you know it's a five and a half the you know it's it's dropped um, many many percentages of lots of downs <laughs> so here we see our 24 hour volume and it is actually going up from what we were watching when we did our last market watch here's the low for that 24 hour period of time and here's the high for that period of time um, this is the current 24 hour change you know how much has it changed from that and this is the going rate as it's happening it would normally be over here but we can still see it even if we had that out of the way. So it's kind of nice. So right now, what we're looking at is, for example, right here, um, let's say this line right here is called a candle. And this candle is set to one week, which means that everything that happens in a whole seven day period of time 
will be represented just by this one candle. And that's what we're seeing here. If we added all these up, it would add up to exactly, you know, the, um, you know, 2018, 2019, you know, however many months this is, there'd be basically four of these per month. So like from 1015 to 1012, there should be about eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see that's how that works. All right. Um, for historical history, just to get a big, uh, you know, overall of what has happened, uh, you're not going to spend a whole lot of time there. So now, as we look at our one day candles, um, you know, everything tends to look very similar, even when you're zooming in until you get to the very last things. But, you know, as you could guess, this means that each of these candles represents a 12 hour period of time. So this is 12 hours, this is 12 hours, this is 12 hours, 12, 12, 12. Very interesting. And I will tell you that, um, you know, some people will just look at like the general shape of up and down and try to trade based on that. Um, yeah, you're not going to do great at day trading doing that, in my personal opinion. Um, but the concept of the doji candles are just, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I am going to um, do a um, intermediate level video for everybody for free and then an advanced level where I kind of get into just um, talking about understanding the, the rhythm and the pace um, of, you know, kind of the heartbeat of the process uh, with just our paid subscribers. Um, so as we go down, um, obviously you have to kind of zoom in and zoom out, which you can uh, click your mouse and scroll in and out with your uh, scroller, the little mouse wheel, um, to see a longer period of time. Like right here, we can go back to about November 2018 and come all the way here to, well, let's see. Yeah, November 2018 to current. And you can see something major happened here. Okay, so as we go to shorter and shorter candles, we see a lot more data in between these different places. So let's say we're looking from here to here. We try to find that same thing. Um, you might see just something like this, even though there's a lot of this in between. It's getting consolidated the longer period of time you look at. So you zoom in further and further and further, closer and closer, closer in. And like this was very recent. This was um just maybe two weeks ago a little bit more than two weeks who who said that it was okay for it to go that quickly i don't know who made those rules but you can see i mean from here looking at a one hour well i mean all of this happened in about four hours but we might say like well gosh what happened to make that happen in four hours so we can kind of slide over here and see if we can tell more information about it and it looks just about the same at the 30 minute as it does because it happened in two candles instead of one when we went from 30 minute candles to 15 minute candles. So I'm going to try to get there without wasting too much time. You can see a little bit more data, not a whole lot, because it really did happen that quick. So within this period of time, there's really nothing from the beginning of the record to the end of the record for that 15 minutes other than just loss, a huge sell-off, massive sell-off. Doesn't happen very often kind of massive sell-off. So I doubt that we can get there from here very easily. Um, and I don't want to waste a lot of time trying to do that kind of thing. Um, but we can see something a little bit similar. So, um, you know, as you get to shorter periods of time, you know, eventually here is our closest view. And we are now looking at every single minute. So like right here, I'm just going to do the most recent because I know for a fact you'll be able to see it. But we can see a whole lot has happened in this time going from, let's see, just right now it says it's uh, 134. This was one. So in the past 30 minutes, you know, yeah, you could say it went from here to here. But it's all these in-betweens that we're usually the most interested in. So consolidating that into this, you know, are you learning more about this 
or um, let me show you what represents that when we change the time. That was all of this represented as one candle. Okay, so what that tells me if I'm getting an overview, well, I'm not going to go into that yet. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you understand this is the timeline, this is the value, the current going value, and this is where it's tracking. It's tracking on the candles. The, count, the candles are counting our time. So as you've noticed just by looking at these while they're in front of you, and once again, this is just going over the basics. We're going to go much more in detail. I'm going to um, grab some. There's some really good data out there. I'm going to grab it directly from some of the sources that I think describe it very well, um, just so you can see what's going on. Um, there's a lot of different information about the movement um, from one candle to another, but also within that certain candle. So for instance, you might notice that this one looks almost like a solid block. And then this one has this little line underneath it. This one has a line above it. This one almost looks like a cross. This one kind of looks like this box is right in the center. Okay, all of this information um, is based on real-time data of what the volume is doing and what the last buy and the last sell orders were like down to the microsecond and adding all that information together in a simple flowing uh, visual. So, I mean, for somebody like myself, which tends to um, gather data visually very strong, you know, some people, um, you know, numbers and information go straight to the brain uh, for me. I process it through what I'm seeing um, in, I, I recognize patterns the way that some people would recognize formulas. Um, so I have to, you know, I understand formula stuff too, but I have to read it very slowly. Uh, so these are perfect for me <laughs> and, um, I tend to trade well on them. Um, I watch the flow of the patterns of the movements and stuff, and I usually strike at a pretty good time. Um, usually about a 98.7% average, if not more than that better. So, um, more better, you know, as opposed to the less better. So we, we can play on like the most basic concepts um, that will always end up being true. And yes, I admit it. Um, when I see pink, I'm going to call it red. It just, um, those are the connotations we're used to. Green is good. Red is bad. Green is up. Red is down. Green is go. Red is stop. And that's just, that's the logic that we're following here too. They just, they chose a pretty color of pink and I like the way it looks. That's fine. Um, but I just, we need to think in terms of green and red and that's what we're going to do. So, um, the information that we find in here, you know, I will go into a uh, more technical explanation of these things, but for right now, um, you notice that there are different shapes. Um, what happens is that this is going to, this will not be done with whatever visualization information it's giving you until this one minute is up which is the case if we were looking at five minutes, 15 minutes. So a lot more you can imagine happens within a 15 minute window than it does a, a one minute. And so you might say, well, okay, if I get the most information by watching one minute, why, I, why wouldn't I just work at one minute all the time? And um, I, I come back to my nature references because that's kind of the undertow scenario where um, if you're hyper-focusing on exactly what's happening second by second and you're really good at the rhythm and stuff and you're getting ready to, you know, you're following the ups and downs and the trends and the changes and you want to go in, um, it's very easy if you're doing that minute after minute after hour, hour after hour, um, you kind of forget where you were in the overall landscape. You kind of forget just how high something is or just how low it is. You can become overly optimistic or overly pessimistic about where you are in the current scheme of things. Like right now, I might think that this looks rather high in comparison to what it's been doing. In the trend that I see and the current position, I might be concerned, gosh, if I get off here, who's to say it might go back down there or here or here. Um, in the grander scheme, if you're looking at really long trades, um, that same thing you're really worried about is right there. Um, just about anybody who thinks anything about Bitcoin doing anything um, is going to assume that you pretty much can't lose going in here if you're planning on holding it for a while. Um, if that's not the case, then we're all wrong about Bitcoin and it will never recover from the hard fork that happened, um, which involves billionaires. So yeah, that really could happen. It's, it is high risk stuff, but it's not likely to happen. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, 
this is what that looks like on the one minute. You know, we're over here. And if we look at it in the 15 minute, you might really be concerned. Gosh, that's kind of high compared to what it's done since, you know, the past few days. You know, I don't know if I should do that. Or you might think, hey, it went all the way up there. <laughs> you know, maybe I should be optimistic and just go in here and, hey, I mean, it's been an uptrend. It'll just keep going up, right? That's what everything does is always goes up. Um, well, is that the case? No, it went down. <laughs> so when it consolidates that information into shorter periods of time, um, you're getting a grand overview of what's been happening, uh, more and more accurate about, you know, how much data you can gather from it did this a while back and then it held for this for a long time and did a micro version of this over there and it was kind of a mirror this was up and then down and this was down and then up um, you can see that this angle has been consistent for a while so it's very possible that it continues um, but you know this is also bitcoin and it does unexpected things all the time as you zoom in you're getting a feel for just what's happening in a certain area and you get better and better data the closer that you come in. So that's what's happening there. So zoomed out, this really does look like a whole bunch of lines. But when we get in and we see the doji candles, we can see, huh, there's some information in there. Interesting information, actually. So explaining what's happening with these different shapes, okay? Um, every minute starts somewhere. It's going to start at the top or the bottom, depending on whether things have been trending upward or downward. Now, Seeing a green candle does not necessarily mean that it was green for a solid minute. In fact, it could have been, you know, green, red, green, red, green, red, and then the last three seconds, green. And then it moves on to the next one, it sells. So what ends up, you know, you when you're watching it live, you'll see it do what it does. But if it's going up, it'll be green. If it's going down, it'll be red. And I mean, that's dealing with the buys and sells that are currently happening and how much of that, um, how much, not only what the current value is, whether those moves are big or small, but whether it's running out of the amount that it has to fulfill. And so you can kind of think of this as this is more and this is less. So, you know, minute one, we're done with minute one. We go into minute two and this happens for an entire minute. Okay. Within that time, People are buying and selling, and the shape of this is going to change based on ups and downs and the amount of those ups and downs. So we enter this position, and we're going to exit that position. And, for instance, let's say that, you know, if this was, you know, going down, and then we started over here, and it started low, and let's just pretend it was green the whole time. It reached this, and then we hit the next one minute. Well, if it continued green, it would have just continued going up. It would have looked a lot like this guy. But right after that minute, um, it kind of peaked out and started selling off some. And it ended up being at a selling point. And, I mean, so, you know, you could have green, red, green, red, green, red, or you could have any combination. But these shapes represent the live action that's taking place. And so with something so simple as um, a block and what they call a wick um, can give you about 64 different overall references. Um, so if you think of that as frames in a movie, um, you know, 30 frames per second can look fairly realistic on most movies. It's a lot higher than people expect for um, game um, frames per second. But just think of that in terms of what are the possibilities. This could be a block. This could be a block with a wick down. This could be a block with just a wick up. This could be a block with a wick up and down. It could be a big block with a very small wick. It could be a very small block with two very, you know, mostly wicks the entire time. And, you know, what do all those things mean? Well, once you get to the point where you do understand the different um, nuance of what's going on with those, um, you may or may not develop, you know, there's not a guarantee that learning is going to lead to having a really great skill at this, but you will certainly know more than when you began. But it is kind of the thing where if you have a passion for this, you will get better than where you started. There's no question. You know, if you're smart and you understand things and you want to learn them really bad, you'll get better. Um, but it's also kind of like a natural talent, whereas, you know, some people might be good at singing or playing the piano and other people might be good at rocket science. Everybody's got a gift. 
you know, whether they're really, really good or not, <laughs> that's more debatable. But, you know, um, you can learn all the piano in the world. And if your left hand just can't keep up with your right, then you may not be a super fantastic pianist. Um, so in the same way, what I'm saying is that you can learn the technicals and understand what all this different movement means. Um, and like when something drastic like that happens, it'll usually mark it for you. You know, look, this jumped way down to 3891. That's a big deal. Um, and so therefore it's picking up and the volume is picking up because there was a million dollars of selling that took place. Um, so not only does this represent each of these, what happened in a minute or six hours, depending on how you want to do it. Um, you know, not only does it represent that, um, but you look at them over time and they start to represent what's likely to happen. Um, and it is a huge guessing game based on instinct. The people that are putting in the orders are the only ones that really know what their plan is for the next part. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you watch this, you know, um, if this kept going green, then you're going to guess that eventually over time, the value is just going to keep going up, right? But if you have some green and then followed by some red, well, okay, there are three greens and there are three reds. I don't really think much about one or the other. They're about the same size. So it looks like it's holding at about the same volume. And it is. It traded a lot of pennies, a lot of volume, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of pennies in this time. Um, but this red was bigger than this green. And so if it's red and it's bigger, then you can understand that it's going to mean going down. Now, once again, remember, this could have been green the majority of the time, and then at the very end, it started going red. So it could be red and, you know, only moderately different if almost exactly the same as the other greens. But if this were going down the majority of the time, not just when it started or just at some point in time, um, if it was going down the whole time, then you'll see this. It's thicker and it went down further. Well, if we see several of these and they're getting bigger than this up here, then this is kind of telling us that something like what we saw happen over here is, is likely to happen. This is why when I describe this, when we're doing our, our live day trading, that when I start to say it's not doing the spikes as much as this curvature, this rainbow shape, this arch, this is a sign of weakening. Uh, meaning that, you know, if you're looking for it to go up, then it's going to stop going up. <laughs> so we have no idea how much, you know, if it reversed here, then you wouldn't see that. But as it got, you know, this was absolutely starting to finish the trend over here. And, you know, when you only see, let me try to get it to where it makes sense here. When you only see this, there is no guarantee that it's not just going to do another one of these. You know, there you might think, okay, I'll go here and then I'll keep going up. There's nothing that guarantees us that we know what's going to happen next. This could very easily make somebody say, hmm, I see a support line, so it's going to keep doing this for a while. Well, I mean, it immediately broke the support line and started coming back up. So, you know, as you watch these candles over time, you get more and more information from them. Uh, the wicks have to do with um, the current direction, a change in direction, but that's because... Um, it deals with amount and the amount means that, you know, if, if it's about to, for that minute period of time, it's getting close to finishing, fulfilling an order or selling off an order. Um, it's going to go on to something else, whether it's just the next, um, the next buy orders that it needs to try to fulfill or whether there's a huge sell off or a, a sudden change. Um, when you see this narrowing out, it's usually going to mean that the, something is going to change. When we see something similar to a cross, usually with this in the very dead center, um, let me use this as an example. Um, this will be tending to look like indecision, um, but not necessarily just indecision. It can also be balance, um, meaning that it could go either way. It may go up from there. It may go down from there. So we will go much, much, much further into detail about the doji candles, what things mean and how they're used and then get into very advanced stuff on just how to develop a sense or a feel for things about how they'll do it so that you are not just reliant upon the charts to give you information, but you are able to utilize them as a skill, um, just like driving where you have, you know, the instrument panel, you have the um, kilometers, miles per hour, you have your fuel gauge, you have your oil gauge, you have your 
all important uh, sound system. <laughs> um, you have the uh, gear shift, you have your brake pedal, your gas pedal, uh, all these different controls, right? Um, once you get familiar with your car, you're pretty skilled at doing those things, you know, with the occasional blip here and there. Um, and you know how to drive. You're used to turning the wheel. Um, with this, you want to get to a point where you're not having to think, mm, which part of that candle was the thing that with the stuff is red good or is green good? I can't remember. Um, and you're thinking of those in terms of, you know, I told you that there's about 64 different things that this can mean. Um, that's really breaking it down into simplicity, but it's true. Um, but take that and take uh, the fact that just this one minute moment in time uh, can represent so many different things in 60 seconds, but it's also dependent on where it came from and where it's going. So predictive things. So your instinct becomes kind of predictive about, you know, gosh, you know, how long is it going to do this? I don't know. How long does it feel like it's going to do that? Well, the doji candles have a lot of that information to them, but the answer is nobody knows. And so you have to have an instinct for, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of times have I seen, uh, you know, this or this or this, and you may not be that kind of person. So you're going to rely more and more on something. Something is going to click that tells you the information that you're looking for better than if you were just going in and guessing blind. And so the bottom line with the charts and how we're measuring time and why we're measuring them the way that we are, the bottom line to that is really you're trying to remove guesswork so that your next move will be an accurate one. And that's what we're doing with the candles. Uh, green up, red down. Measure a time, one minute. So as we go along, you know, even that alone gives you enough information to where, you know, eventually if the red starts selling more aggressively, it starts selling more aggressively, and you finally see people start buying in here, it's a pretty good sign that it's going to start going back up. And if it went down extremely rough, um, there's a good chance it's not going to buy all the way back in. It may, it you know, if it's been doing this weakening, you know, I'm telling you, anybody could look at a spike and see whether it's sharp or dull, you know? So if you see a spike and you start seeing the spike change, it's going to go down. Um, not a guarantee. Not a guarantee at all. But that's ten, that tends to be what it means. There was a lot more aggressive attempts to go back up. You know, it's like the left side of these are spikes. But then what happens when they kind of run out of steam? Well, they're sell, selling, selling off not very aggressively. You know, people are selling a little, but they don't really care a whole lot. <laughs> so there's much more aggressive buy-in. There's a lot more that care about getting it back up here uh, and getting it at a good deal before it gets there. So the selling off was not very aggressive. But as both of them started to weaken, weaken um, they can pretty much guarantee that it's not going to keep holding that value forever. It's just, it's softening. There's not as much of a push in either direction. Um, it's much easier for something to go down than it is for it to go up. Just trust me. Um, this stuff is just like nature once again. It got an undertow, but in this case, you got gravity. Gravity is heavy. Gravity is rough. So think of it as, in terms of like, you know, how high something can go when it jets off, when somebody maybe has pumped something or some really great information has come out and somebody pumps something. <laughs> Usually um, those articles are a little bit because somebody wants to pump something. But, um, and things go up and up and up, it's glorious. And you need to think of it as something remarkable happening. Because going down is kind of expected. You're pushing against that the entire time we're working this market. It's very unlikely for anything to continue to go up. The buy-in always has a lot more fear than the sell-off. I mean, I know that that sounds strange, you know, fear, uncertainty, doubt versus FOMO. Um, you know, people mostly keep buying high um, because they're scared that if it keeps going up that they didn't get in on something, but eventually they will give up on that. Whereas the sell-off, they're terrified and they're scared they're going to lose everything. And so they almost force themselves to do so. <laughs> so, you know, the sell-offs are just, they're very likely to happen. Um, and so, you know, the fact that everybody, not everybody has a billion dollars to work with either. So, you know, buy-in can't go on forever, but as long as you already own something, you can sell it off. So as you can understand, the gravity is very heavy down here. Doji candles, measurement of time. 
measures the up and down movement, but also the value, the volume and the value of that rate and how much of it is left before it moves on to the next thing. We'll get into the directions and all that kind of stuff that it means later. Um, the next lesson that I'm going to do, I'm going to go over just an overview of the indicators that we use. Um, I am not going to cover the ones that we don't use. There are a million different videos for them, and you're going to learn some unique things here that you don't learn elsewhere. So I'm going to do an overview of that, and then we're going to co cover each individual indica indicator. And then uh, we will be doing some of the more advanced lessons, uh, lessons. My goodness. Then we will be doing some of the more advanced lessons uh, for our paid subscribers. So thank you so much. This is Gordon Freeman, Archangel Alts, leading the free man's movement of the crypto revolution. Thought leaders of the crypto revolution. We have hashtag on the, on the Twitter tweets. Uh, we are using hashtag uh, crypto hashtag mass adoption because it's the most important thing for this month and onward uh, and we have created our own hashtag crypto louder megaphone because we're trying to lead a movement and we need you we need your help to get the word out so share let people know what's going on you will get the most accurate information about how to day trade and i will give you the more examples about day trading live than i think just about anybody else that you're going to find um, and i hope that you will join us um, we're going to get more in depth with Q and A, um, and hopefully, just you know, more interaction as we go along. Um, I'm excited about um, us all learning together, being on this journey together, and my being able to help instruct the things that have gotten us this far. So, God bless you guys, and I will see you at the next lesson. Archangel Alts out. <laughs>